All right, and right as I start recording, my neighbor decides to start cutting the grass. Awesome. Uh, either way, what we're going to be going over today is this Lossless Scaling 1.5.7 app, which is available on Steam. Unfortunately, this app is not free. However, there is a free version of it that is available. It's called uh, Lossless Scaling Lite, I believe. Either way, this app costs $4.99, and it's kind of something that... Uh, it's kind of interesting to check out if you're a tech nerd like myself. The main reason is because if we go into the scale types, we can scale from integer, nearest, FSR, and FSR light. So today we're going to just go through a few titles that we can basically test with this, see how they look, and see how well they run because right now I'm about to run these games at 4K. Uh, first game we're going to start off with is Red Dead Redemption 2 and it is going to be looking glorious so I will be right back all right so right now the setup that I've got going is a 1440p resolution being upscaled to 4k now the reason that I'm doing that is because it one provides playable performance uh, and two it honestly doesn't really look all that bad on a 4k monitor surprisingly uh, vsync will be on just to try and keep gpu usage under control and keep things at 60. realistically fps doesn't really matter with fsr sure it may look better when it's or may look more temporally stable i guess with more frames but realistically 60 is what is going to be perfectly fine the rest of the settings, though, are a mix of ultra, high, and low. It's what I call the playable settings. Thankfully, this game is written on Vulkan, so it actually runs pretty decently. Uh, resolution scale is, is going to turn off just because that's where I start running into issues with the software uh, and the scaling. So let's go ahead and get into game. And let's go ahead and find some foliage. If you look at the actual foliage itself, you can see, especially with the temporal anti-aliasing, like I'll zoom in right here just so you guys can see it. With the temporal anti-aliasing, it leaves this weird kind of checkerboarding pattern where it's it's almost like dithering, I would say. Uh, if you remember that from the PlayStation 2 days, uh, where it like mixes colors. It doesn't really do that on the edges of trees. Ooh, but it does leave streaks. I don't know if you guys can see the ghosting from the temporal. Yeah. Oh well. Moving on, let's go ahead and try to find some more artifacts. Either way, let me go over some PC specs real quick. You can see in the upper left hand corner I am running a Titan X Pascal. Right now it is water cooled with uh, copper blocks on the GDDR5X memory modules, allowing me to get just over 11 gigabit per second out of the modules. Not a crazy insane overclock or anything, but it brings it up to about a 1080 Ti. So, right now, what is going on? Ooh, look at the hair. The hair, you can see some artifacts. You see, it doesn't look 100% clean which is what happens when you render at a lower resolution and then upscale. If you guys can't tell, I'm kind of thinking out loud right now. Uh, I don't really have a script for this video. I kind of just wanted to go through and look at some games just to see what happens when we inject FSR via this lossless scaling app. Obviously, it's going to cause some bugs, some issues. This game is incredibly unstable. I've had it crash twice on me already. So keep that in mind if you are trying to check out this, uh, this software. It is buggy. It is unfinished. It is only version 1.5.7. I'm going to probably fall down there, so I'll stay away from there. But right now, we are only sitting at about 80-ish percent GPU usage. My 11700K is sitting at about 25%, 23%, 21%, and we're hitting 60 FPS. So there's definitely overhead on my CPU, but my GPU is kind of struggling, which is weird because it's only using about 5 gigs of RAM. Ooh, there we go. 
if you see, I think that's part of the volumetric fog effects, because I know that's a system in this game. Uh, looking at the fog, though, if you look specifically around the crosshair, like the little dot in the middle of the screen, you can also see it right up on the vegetation right up to the right on this screen. You can kind of see it on the smoke to the left. Uh, oh, what's up, train? But where did that, that whole cloud just despawn? Cool. Or it's right there. You can see around the edge of the cloud, it's kind of got this dithering effect, especially on the vegetation. Let me try and get get it back in the camera. There we go. Around the edge of the vegetation, you can see it. I'm sure it had something to do with it being an alpha transparency, but... Oh, you can see it on the water as well. You can see the dithering effect on the water as it's falling. It's also... My GPU is not happy with that. You can also see trailing behind the insects that are flying through the fog. Just kind of thinking out loud, but it's kind of interesting to look at and analyze once you're able to find, or uh, once you're able to find these sort of things. All right, so I've been playing this game for quite a bit. Let me go ahead and move into the next FSR game. Alright, welcome to Battlefield 5. The reason I chose this is because the Battlefield 2042 beta recently ended, and I am mostly interested in how Battlefield performs, and this is one of the newer Frostbite engine games besides Battlefront 2. So, we are just going to go ahead and run around and see how FSR is working with this game. So far, uh, all the jaggies on everything actually look pretty good. Uh, I am also only downscaling, or excuse me, upscaling from like 1600p, I believe. So. L. Yeah, like one of the things you can definitely see is right around here. You can see along the edge of the gun, you can see some artifacting. Realistically, though, that's not that bad, to be honest. We are back in game. And to keep it in mind, this is also completely maxed out. Uh, GPU usage is sitting at about 66%. Probably you can spike it around 70 at times. Uh, right now it's in the high 50s, low 60s. Someone's getting lit up over here. Nice. Got one of them. Definitely picking up this STG. Oh yeah. Yeah, everything in the, in the distance looks pretty good. There's no, like, shimmering. Probably has something to do with the fact that we're upscaling from 1600p, but either way, I'm sure in this video you'll be able to see everything perfectly clearly because I have the bitrate set to over 130 megabit per second, which is, or excuse me, megabytes per second, which is pretty crazy. But let's go ahead and run through this field real quick. Oh, interesting. I will say though, performance is actually really impressive right now. I wonder if we could actually raise the resolution scale and it would look even better, but this is perfectly playable and this is perfectly fine. Got one of them. Got another one. Got 
thing. So that was Battlefield 5. To be honest, it looks really good. It honestly looks better than Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish out this game, though, and I'll probably use the gameplay later in the video. Just because I'm actually kind of having fun, surprisingly. So, I will catch you in the next game. Here we go. Now we got weapons. Okay. Not gonna lie, I've only played Cyberpunk 2077 about three times, so I'm not really that far in the game. Um, I know this is this guy's motorcycle. But, I will say, for being a 1440p render, this actually does look pretty good, to be honest. Like, around the edge of the gun, you can see how everything is... I don't want to say anti-alias, but it looks clean. Everything just looks cleaner yeah. when it's uh, FSR'd. Let's see what other guns we've got. We've got this assault rifle. No, I don't care about the assault rifle. We got our hands. So this is a mix of high, medium, and low. Um, most of this stuff that's compute heavy is set to high. The other, everything else is set to low, such as particle effects and. Uh, I'm trying to think of every other specific thing that I turned on to low. It's kind of blanking right now. I can check. So. Okay, we got some medium in there. Volumetric cloud quality. Let's turn that off. Mix dynamic decals. No, we're good with that. Ray tracing. Pfft, no. Keep that off. And we're getting about 46 frames a second. Let's go ahead and turn down this to 1080p. See how bad it gets. Okay, so it got a little softer. It's not as sharp, evidently, um, but our performance just jumped up to about 60 FPS, which is excellent. So. Yeah, to be honest, Night City actually looks pretty good with FSR at 1080p. It ain't no 4K, but ooh, that's where we can get some jackies. But yeah, I mean, on a Titan X Pascal, I think it's kind of sad that we can't hit 1440p at, at uh, 60 FPS, but. Realistically speaking, it's only about as powerful as an RTX 3060. It's got the same amount of cores, it's got the same memory amount. Uh, the Titan X Pascal actually has more memory bandwidth because it's on a wider bus. But either way, why can you jump over these? Wink. Yeah, and I mean, my CPU is doing pretty well. We're using about 12 gigs of RAM, 6 gigs of VRAM, GPU is pegged at 100%. So what happens if we kill this kid? Nice. Alright, so that was a fun little life. 
let's see what happens when we raise it to a full fat 4k. Actually no, let's raise it to 75% and then FSR it all the way up to 4k. That looks really good. But performance is suffering. Either way, that was Cyberpunk 2077. I actually had a lot of fun putting this video together. Uh, to be honest, it, I didn't get the results that I expected. I expected it to look, honestly, quite a bit worse. Uh, experiencing it for myself, I am honestly kind of impressed and I'm more than ready for this to be added to other games. I think it would be an interesting inclusion because not only do we get more to test, but it also helps it run on lower end hardware, which is something that is honestly the only thing that people really can attain right now so that's really all i have to say on the matter that's all i really have to show off uh, i just wanted to show a few quick games uh, showing this game off or showing excuse me showing the software off and just showing you guys what it's capable of because not every single game that we tested has fsr support so if you enjoyed don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads that's all i really have to say on the matter so thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.